You're listening to 105.3, The Gerblin, Dominaria's number one music source for generic goblin noise. This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. With free weekly content and free shipping over $100, you can save 5% site-wide by using the promo code MTGMUDSTA. I'm also sponsored by Face to Face Games, Canada's premier Magic the Gathering store. Using the promo code MTGMUDSTA will get you 5% off site-wide, with eligible orders getting free shipping Canada-wide. If you're looking for a direct way to help the channel, please consider joining my Patreon and becoming a member of the generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang and welcome back. Today's game was filmed in my studio, and I'm playing my Clark Timna deck, which is Mardu Spellslingers. Chris is playing Calamax, which is Tamur Spellslingers. Shane has built Sabaz, which is a Boros eggs-based combo deck. And Ben is playing a Togatog, -tog, which does run a surprising amount of Togs, and is heavily focused on land-based combos. Ben wins the die roll, and starts us off. He draws, and plays a Forest. Chris copies him, playing a Forest as well, but also casts a Birds of Paradise. Shane has a Snow-Covered Mountain, and casts Arkham's Astrolabe, drawing as it enters. I've kept the stupidest hand of my life, playing a Plains, and casting Soul Ring and then tap the Soul Ring for Mind Stone. Ben drops a Swamp and pays 2 for Sakura Tribe Elder, sacrificing it to go and find an island. Chris has a Mountain for turn, and casts his own Soul Ring, and passes. Shane plays Battlefield Forge, and taps 2 for Talisman of Conviction. He's got enough for Zabaz, which is a Palindrome by the way, and passes turn. I draw, and crack the Mind Stone, drawing a card. I find another source of colorless, sadly, and it's a Mana Vault, and I pass. Ben draws, and pays 3 for Commander Sphere. Chris has an Island, and just casts Calamax, and passes. Shane draws, and plays another Snow-Covered Mountain. He plays a Credit Voucher, which he calls a Bad Scroll Rack and then drops an Implement of Improvement, and ships the turn to me. I draw and still can't find a land, and my greed is super punished. I then have to pass to Ben because I'm bad at magic. Ben draws, and plays a Tap Balakut. He pays 3 for a Psychotog, and passes to Chris. Chris has a Wasteland for turn, which seems pretty good against that Balakut, and he taps 4 for a Storm Kill an Artist. Shane plays another Snow-Covered Mountain, and activates and sacrifices the Credit Voucher. Once that's resolved, he moves to combat, and hits me with his commander for one. I draw, and discard at the end of turn Faithless Looting, because being greedy has paid off so well for me this game. Ben draws, and taps one of each color for a Togatog. -tog. He then swings the Psychotog at me, dealing one, and passing. Chris goes to combat after drawing, and hits Shane for four with Calamax. With his commander now tapped, he passes to Shane. Shane has a Darksteel Citadel for turn, and then taps two for a Dockside Extortionist. In response, Ben sacrifices the Sphere to draw a card, and the Dockside then enters, making Shane three treasure tokens. He uses a treasure and taps a land, to cast an Arcbound Reclaimer, and passes. I finally draw my second land on, like, turn 6, playing an Isolated Chapel, which thankfully lets me cast Read the Bones. I quickly scry the top two cards to the bottom, draw two, and lose two. I then pass turn, discarding Past in Flames to hand size. Ben plays a Plains, and taps one for a Codex Shredder. He goes to combat, and swings a Togatog -tog at Shane, who blocks with a Dockside Extortionist. Ben then casts a Prismatic Omen in his second main phase, and passes turn. At the end of turn, Chris casts Frantic Search. He gets to put a plus one plus one counter onto Calamax, and draws two, and discards two, and untaps three lands twice. He also gets to make two treasure tokens from the Storm Kiln Artist. Chris untaps, and draws her turn. He goes to combat, swinging Calamax at me, and dealing 5. 
He then taps 3 mana for Harrow, sacrificing the tapped forest, and gets 2 copies of the spell because his commander is tapped, going into his library to find 4 untapped basics. Plus, he makes 2 treasures from the artist triggers. He also gets to put a counter onto Kalamax. He's turned 3 mana to 6, which isn't bad. He then casts a Gruul Signet, and passes to Shane. Shane draws, and has been saying for the last 3 turns he'll help me out, but never does. He finally holds up on his promise, casting Reforge the Soul, and in response, Ben casts Assassin's Trophy and targets Kalamax. Chris says he's got a few things he wants to do before that resolves though, and the first of which is casting a Crossing Grip. He gets a copy of it, and has lots of targets to choose from, and debates to just completely shut me out of the game by blowing up my mana rocks. He decides instead to blow the Codex Shredder, an Arcbound Reclaimer. Chris also gets a counter onto Kalamax, and gets two more treasure tokens from the artist. Chris isn't done though, and casts a free Deflecting Swat, redirecting the trophy to take out Zabaz. With Shane's commander getting destroyed, he gets to go and find a basic. Ben then decides at this point he wants to do something as well, and discards his hand to pump up the Psychotog. Responding to the last trigger, Chris doesn't want to lose his Chaos Warp, and he casts it, picking the Prismatic Omen. Ben shuffles it in, and asks Shane to cut the deck and reveal his card. Great. Cut to omniscient, please. <laughs> one time, one time. Right here. What? What? No. No. What have you done? Unfortunately for the table, this happens, and Ben gets his omniscience right before we resolve the wheel. With all that shenanigans over, Shane then casts an Oswald Fiddlebender and passes to me. I play a Blood Crypt in my main phase as my land drop, taking two so it comes in untapped. I then pay three mana for Timna and cast a Jessica's Will. I get seven red mana because everyone has a full grip and exile my top three cards. They're not terribly good, and I cast a Gilded Lotus and then Talisman of Indulgence. I also thank Shane for helping me draw lands, although I can only play one per turn. Before I pass turn, I then pay two mana for Kark and ship it to Ben, hoping we have one more round. Ben draws and casts Grim Tutor in his main phase for free from his hand, losing some life to tutor for a card to put to hand. Ben then discards cards to Psychotog, pumping it, and exiles more cards from his graveyard to make it into a 12-13 once all is said and done. Ben then sacrifices the Psychotog to a Togatog, making it an 18-18. Ben then casts for free from his hand Return of the Wildspeaker, picking the mode to draw cards. Ben gets to draw 18 cards, and one of them is a Solemn Simulacrum, which comes in and finds him a tapped forest. He then casts a Demonic Tutor, and goes to find a Prismatic Omen again, which he wants more casts. We then see a Thaumatog hitting the stack, and then the field, and he floats his mana before sacrificing all of his lands to pump it. He uses one of the Floating Blue for a Mystical Tutor, and goes to find Mystical Teachings and put it on top. Ben then casts Explore from hand, drawing a card and getting an extra land for turn. He plays an Island, before dropping down a Lithosog. Ben then casts a City of Solitude, and sacrifices the Thaumatog to a Togatog, pumping his commander even further. Ben then casts Soul's Majesty, drawing a further 25 cards. One of the many cards Ben has drawn this turn is Faith's Reward, and he returns for the most part the lands he's been sacrificing. The neat part is they all come back untapped, although he doesn't really need a ton of mana with Omniscience out. Since the Prismatic Omen is back, Valakut sees the lands as mountains, and Ben blasts Chris for 18 damage with the triggers. Ben then casts a Mystic Confluence, and picks the mode to draw a card three times. He then casts Knight's Whisper, losing two, and drawing two more cards. Ben's not done though, casting a Growth Spiral to draw another card, He's able to play a land from hand, and a force hits the field, dealing three more to Chris with Balakut's trigger. Ben then casts the Mystical Teaching again, and goes to find Second Sunrise. 
he floats the mana from his lands again, and then sacrifices them to pump up the Thaumatog again, and sacrifice the Atogs to Atogatog before casting Second Sunrise. His lands come back again, and he takes Chris out with the Balakut triggers, and uses the spare one to take out Oswald. With his way clear now, Ben then takes out Shane with a Togatog, dealing well over 21 points of commander damage. Ben then once more sacrifices his lands, and discards 13 cards to Psychotog, before casting Planar Birth from his hand for free thanks to Omniscience. This allows all players to bring back all basic lands from their graveyard, and Ben is able to take me out with the Balakut triggers and win the game. Game Review Time What madness did we just witness? My goodness, Ben, you monster. Although, you know what? Props to you for playing and winning with a Togatog -tog and at least taking one opponent out with commander damage. Ben drew so many cards that last turn, and my goodness did he blow up and recurse so many of his own lands. He floated mana, although I don't think he actually had to after that City of Solitude was out, but it was probably just in case. I kept the worst opening hand of my life, and I got so greedy seeing those two mana rocks in hand. I thought for sure I would draw at least one more land and be able to cast that Read the Bones, but as you saw, it was only like turn 4 or turn 5 before that happened. I was still able to fill up my graveyard a little bit though, which would have been great if that plains had been a mountain instead. Shane Zabaz deck was actually much meaner, and he played it the game before, which ended up winning in 7 minutes. I will stipulate that this is because he ended up drawing beautifully, and was able to assemble Bomberman combo through no tutors and just drawing it. I think Chris has been traumatized after casting Chaos Warp twice that night, and both times he hit the card that he'd shuffled in, and in this case, Omniscience. I completely understand wanting to use it and not lose it, but my goodness did the table get punished for that very idea. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.